We hear the two parties, that's the plaintiff and defendants, and in consultation with the association's constitution and other relevant documents determine the case. Two, to further make recommendations that will guide future operations of the association. After hearing the two parties separately, and then meeting with both parties together, the committee made the following observations on the major causes of the dispute. A. There were several acts by the current executives and secretary general of the GAA related particularly to the elections and its organization, which the plaintiffs were very unhappy about and therefore strongly objected to. These acts, however, in the view of the committee, are supported by the GAAS updated 2016 constitution. Some examples are as follows. One, the executives of the GAA have the exclusive power to determine the time, the date, the venue of the General Assembly or Congress and this is provided for under section 13.1 of the Constitution as follows. I quote, the Federation must hold an annual general assembly once every year at such time, date, and place as the executive determines, but not more than 15 months after the last AGA. This provision Contrary to the claim of the plaintiffs, as contained in their amended rate of summons, does not give the executives the obligation to consult members or other stakeholders of the Congress on any decisions related to date, time, and venue for Congresses. Two, the Constitution of the GAA mandates the Secretary General to be the custodian of all minutes of General Assemblies and Congresses. The minutes of a Congress are to be approved by the delegates at the next Congress. Section 13.9 of the Constitution provides as follows, and I quote, Minutes shall be kept by the Secretary General of all General Assembly meetings, and minutes shall be approved by the delegates at the General Assembly meeting, following the meeting at which the minutes were recorded. Again, this provision, contrary to the assertion of the plaintiffs, as contained in their amended statement of claim, does not oblige the Secretary General to send to members of the GAA the minutes of a meeting before the next General Assembly or Congress is held. Three, members of the association, as defined under Section 4 of the Constitution, includes the following, and I quote, any IAAF Council, Committee, Commission, board members in Ghana who shall be ex official voting members of the, of the Federation's Congress and Executive Board. Unquote. The above definition of a member of the GAA is restricted to any IAAF Council, Committee, Commission, or board members in Ghana. The use of the term ex officio in the provision is therefore in reference to the categories preceding the term. Ex officio members from their bare definition, contrary to the assertion of the plaintiffs, cannot be defined to mean ex president, ex chairman, etc. 
and other stakeholders of the GAA. Four, the constitution of the GAA does not prohibit the nomination of one person to various positions. Section 15.1a provides as follows, and I quote, every person seeking election to the positions of president, vice president, organizing secretary, and treasurer must be nominated by at least one member. Nominations must be received by the secretary general by no later than 28 days prior to the general assembly at which any such positions will become vacant, unquote. Neither the above provision nor subsequent ones gives direction on how to deal with a situation where one person is nominated for more than one position. The practice adopted by the GAA is to allow persons nominated for more than one position to decide at the Congress grounds one position which they would contest and voting it down accordingly. This practice has the potential to cause some maneuverings at the Congress grounds which may not be healthy for the elections. Now I come to section B. The tenure of the current executives expired on 14th November 2018. And therefore, elections ought to have been held on or before the date. Sorry, before that date. Section 27, one of the Constitution provides as follows, and I quote Whereas this new Constitution comes into force between GAA National Elective Congresses, the elected term of all current ESCO members elected at the November 15, 2014 Congress shall reflect the four-year term prescribed by the preceding constitution in force at the time of year election at that Congress. The elected tenors of those ESCO members shall therefore aspire at the next elected Congress to be held on or before November 2018. C. The various flaws identified by the plaintiffs in the Constitution can only be rectified by the membership of the GAA. This can be achieved by the members taking steps to have various problematic sections of the Constitution amended. Ladies and gentlemen, so, the outcome of the mediation. In its attempt to facilitate the amicable settlement of the dispute, the committee proposed to the parties as follows. A. That for the positive development of athletics in Ghana, the parties should mutually agree for the elections to be held. That the first plaintiff and other candidates among the plaintiffs should be afforded more time by the GAA to know the delegates nominated for the various positions and canvas for votes. C. That the GAA should fix the election date for not less than one month from the date the parties reach an agreement and have terms of settlement entered in court. The last but not the least is D, that the plaintiffs should study the constitution and identify all the loopholes therein and at the Congress table motions for all the necessary amendments to be made. The above proposals was accepted by the second defendant, also representing the first defendant. However, in a letter 
dated 25th of March 2019, addressed to the committee. The plaintiffs rejected the proposal of the committee and stated that their case had not been adequately looked into and investigated. The recommendations from the committee. A. It is recommended that in order for future elections of the GAA to be transparent and free and fair, the Secretary General should, after receiving nominations, write to persons who have been nominated for more than one position to settle on one position which they would contest. After this, a publication should be made by the Secretary General so that members become fully aware of the persons running for the various positions. B. Ex-presidents or chairmen can be made ordinary members without voting rights of the GAA subject to the approval of Congress. This will give due recognition to past officials and also allow for them to bring on board their experience for the further development of the sport. C. Even though the Constitution of the GAA gives exclusive power to the Zen and time of Congresses, the Secretary General of the GAA should provide this information to nominated persons early enough before publication to afford them adequate time to prepare for the Congress and also canvas for votes as much as possible. All the candidates should be written to on all information related to the Congress. And last, D, even though the Constitution provides that minutes of a General Assembly or Congress should be approved at the next General Assembly or Congress, to give purpose to this provision, the Secretary General can send members the minutes few days before the Congress to allow them ample time to peruse the minutes and make meaningful corrections on the day of the Congress when it is to be approved. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the committee wish to express appreciation to the Director General of the National Sports Authority for giving them the opportunity to serve the nation. On this note, I thank you very much.